It's just like a world crumbled. Like you wake up every morning like, why haven't I heard from him? Incredibly wonderful last two weeks of his life. The last 20 minutes of his life were a tragedy. Keep on trucking. Is what he'd say. You see, Timothy Davison saw the beauty in nature. I didn't even know his name was him for the longest time. Osti, though, would face the worst of humanity. Okay, were you the one that called about the, the Ford Ranger, right? They were definitely out on a killing spree that night. January 4th, I-81, Franklin County. Someone ran him off the road. Then comes back and kills him in cold blood. The gunman never found. And that's just really, um, really what keeps me up at night. Ossie was just one of the guys working out of his dad's shop. And you're looking out the window, every truck that pulls in or every new vehicle that pulls in, you know, your head pops out and, you know, you just expect him to be there. Instead, they see him in a way they never imagined. May you rest in peace knowing your family, family and friends, friends loved you for the person you were. You, you were, were the, the best, best son, family, family member, member and, friend and friend that anyone, anyone could, could ask for, for and you will be missed greatly. He's just very good at, at knowing where to, where to go and how to get out of situations. An off-roader. And he was a very good driver. Osti loved the challenge of making it up the mountain. There's a gap in the healing process there because we, we can't move past the whodunit part. This is the reward. Peace. <laughs> right near a cell phone tower, hundreds of miles away though, that's what failed him. He had asked, should I get off the exit? And it was right past there where he was run off the road. So I know he slowed down, waiting for an answer. U.S. Senator Bob Casey asked the commission to investigate why Timothy Davison's 911 call for help was dropped. The FCC answered Casey saying it doesn't know why. When you call 911, you expect them to be there and to help you in the, situ in the situation. And if, if they can't do that, then there should be signs posted just saying this area you're entering isn't covered by 911. People that take 911 calls need to be trained um, at, on a national level. That was at our friend's wedding. And every single picture he's in, he's got that look on his face of so just pure joy. <laughs> Memories. Oh, yeah. Hoping one day she'll find justice for Osti. That will be the time, I think, when, you know, we really start like healing as opposed to just making it through. Because that's what we're doing right now. We're going through the motions. So as life moves on, they hope for more clarity. Someone knows something out there. In Poland, Maine, Osti's spirit stays alive. Good work. Yeah. Rock on. It's the way it should be. Keep on trucking. Kyle Rogers, CBS 21 News. crash. I jumped out of bed quick and I went to this room and I couldn't get I couldn't get through the room. That's because a car was blocking her access to her living room. The skid marks of how it got there still remain in daylight. This is about what? Uh, eight or nine times. It turns out that this isn't the first time Joe Coombs has had unexpected visitors either on her porch or on the lawn. One time there was a the guy came and he hit that he hit all three of these those two houses, and then he hit my front door there. Uh, I don't know what the answer is. Joe says police patrol for speeders along here, but the problem persists. Well, you can hear the trucks. You, you listen once. She could perhaps put in barriers like this that the neighbor put in, but she would have to pay for it. Or there's an option of a guardrail, but she's been told that there's issues with that as well. If they put a guardrail here, we have to be responsible if any car accident happens. Spring Garden Township Police Chief says this is all about right of way. PennDOT has to get involved, and he said the township will work to set up a meeting with PennDOT. Guess what, guess what? As Joe picks up the pieces. I thought it was busted and it's intact. I don't know how that happened, it got so intact. Yeah. 
honestly thought he was dead. It looks like she was going pretty fast. A simple walk quickly turned tragic for Lindsay Lunzard and her dog. But the screen door wasn't latched. Damon, her 100 pound German Shepherd, bolted across the street after a cat. He must have saw me at the same time because he started to run back. And I was like, Damon, no! But it was too late and a big SUV came and it hit him. Her neighbors called 911. First thing I asked to the, the dispatch center was if the dog was uh, still alive or if it was deceased and they were not able to let me know that. This footage from firefighter Jim Hur's helmet cam has the answer. Damon was alive. And I was like, oh, I started freaking out because I was like, oh my God, he's not dead. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. But the Coryville Volunteer Fire Department did. We had just trained uh, last, actually uh, Monday night on uh, some airbag and some what they call stabilization. That training came in handy when Damon needed it the most. They put these block things under the back of her car and it looked like an air compressor, and they lifted her car up to get my dog out. Come here, buddy, lay down. Holy Come cow, here. he's not any worse for wear. Look at that. Lay down, buddy. Oh, good job, lay down. Damon. Lay down. We were just like, oh, thank you, God. Thank you so much. Damon was hurt, but the doctor says he'll be okay. We actually haven't been able to find any fractures anywhere. Most people wouldn't be able to sustain minor injuries like that by a car, let alone a dog but he's strong and we can't wait for him to come home.